and I like to chill and watch TV. And today I'm here by myself just to talk about my anime show, Yashihime. We have made it to episode 12. This episode was called Night of the New Moon and the Black Haired Toa. So I know that I have had several complaints since the Yashihime series started. I'm going to go ahead right now and just apologize because just because I expect a series to be one way, um, a lot of people in the Inuyasha community that fell in love with Inuyasha and Kagome, I'm talking to you guys specifically, I am one of them, we need to let this go. Not let go of one of our favorite couples, but we need to let the fact that this show is not centered around their daughter, we need to let that go. Um, thinking back on it, the title of the series itself gave me a very big hint that while Maroha would be involved, she was never gonna be one of the main characters. It's called Princess Half Demons. She's a quarter demon. So that right there, um, I guess I was just secretly holding on to hope that she'd play a bigger role and her parents would play a bigger role than they are. But I have come to terms with this. I have, you know, settled it deep within my soul and I'm okay now. And we are gonna move forward and judge this series based off what it is and what it's giving us. And in that aspect, I can't even lie. I mean, it's not a terrible show. A lot of my complaints were just because I felt like Maroha should have played a bigger role. But anyways, so we're gonna be moving forward and reviewing the series with that new mindset and, you know, just trying to appreciate it for what it is and being grateful that we even got anything after Inuyasha. So this episode brought Kanten back. He did escape after his battle with the girls and it introduced us to a new character, Nikasin. Nikasin is a former sage who pulled a Star Wars and turned to the dark side and he is now a demon apparition thing. And Kanten feels like Nikasin would be the best one to defeat the girls. You're part human, part demon. You understand them more than I do. As the girls are investigating the mountain looking for Nikasin, Setsunus begins to notice differences in Toa. So I give the twins that, even though they've been separated for a very long time, now that they're back in each other's presence, Setsuna has been very good about sensing Toa and differences in her. She noticed that her heart rate was different and at one point she noticed that the blood within her smelled different. She even ends up telling uh, the other demon slayers that she can't smell any of Toa's demon energy. We know from the Inuyasha series that on the nights of the new moon, half demons usually lose their power. In the case of Naraku, he was able to pick and choose when that happened. Um, in Inuyasha's case, he didn't get to pick. It was just new moon, he lost his powers. So Setsuna is able to sense a difference in her sister. And later on, on the bridge, we see Toa's hair slowly change from white to black. It's once Moroha gets Toa to the cave and we add in Mioga that we get a little bit of explanation. Well, not we, they get a little bit of explanation as to why this is happening. Automatically, Toa is worried about Setsuna because by default, we're twins, we have the same blood, this must be happening to her too, right? Wrong. We see in this episode that Maroha makes a barrier to try and protect her, Mioga, and Toa. The only question I have about this is Moroha seems very in tune with her spiritual abilities. And if Kagome hasn't been a presence in Moroha's life, I'm wondering who helped her hone her skills. Was it just Kaede? Um, does Miyoga make appearances and help her figure out her spiritual powers? Because to me, setting up the barrier and being able to, you know, actually suppress 
Nikasen from being able to find them seemed like a very advanced power, um, but I could be wrong. Then the Demon Slayers appear to help out the girls. Now, it was here that I started having some theories about where the fire that separated Toa and Setsuna in the first place came from because we see that the demon slayers decided that it might just be easier because of all the poison gas floating around to just burn the mountain down and they start launching these things at the mountain and just setting it all ablaze and when the girls were younger and the fire appeared it's almost like it just came out of nowhere kind of like what we saw but this also causes Moroha's barrier to start to recede and go away, which leads to Nikasen finding them and blowing out this gas that seems to turn them to stone. Um, but then later on when Toa appears, we see that, okay, as soon as we break it, they pop right back out. And now Toa and Setsuna are reunited and Setsuna notices a very big change in Toa. She almost didn't recognize her at first. Now, the explanation that Moroha gave as to why the new moon may affect only Toa and not Setsuna, I didn't accept it almost didn't make sense because a new moon is a new moon. I don't think that just because Setsuna can't sleep and can't dream that that would change the fact that her power should go away on the new moon. I don't feel like sleeping has anything to do with it which makes me wonder why only Toa is affected by the new moon. Because the only theories that I come up with are either Setsuna is a full demon, but that can't happen because everybody's been referring to her as a half demon. It seems like she is very much aware of the fact that she is a half demon and Moroha smelled it. So that can't be it. We know they both have the same father. That's come up several times. And they're supposed to be twins. I don't understand how it affects one and not the other. Just because lack of sleep and lack of dreams. I don't know. I'm reading too far into that. Maybe I should just let that go. We did kind of get an explanation. <sighs> Anyways, and while the girls were able to defeat Nikasen, we still have Kanten as a problem, and it doesn't seem like they even realized that Nikasen was sent by Kanten, so we'll still have to get to that later. Overall, I think this was my favorite episode. No, nope, second favorite. This was my second favorite episode of the series after um, the one we got with Yatsume and the dream casting spell um but this was a very good episode very informative gave me a lot of new things to think about new things to focus on um and some very big questions to try and break down biggest one why does the new moon only affect one of the twins that's probably gonna haunt me in my quiet moments and then the preview so this preview gives us an update on moroku and sango or at least that's what it seems like Looks like another one of the four perils has shown himself. This one seems to attack monks. And in the preview we get, uh, it looks like Moroku is trying to complete a thousand day training, you know, to reach a different level of enlightenment or something, I guess. Um, when it seems like he comes under attack. I was very happy to see him. It gives me a little bit of an update on where he may have been this entire time. And then we see Songo a little bit. When we see her, she looks sad. It looks like she's praying maybe at a grave or something. Now, I know Moroku and Sango had twin girls, two girls, and I haven't seen them. And it makes me wonder, did something happen to one or both? Because I, it did seem like Sango was like praying at a grave or something like that. Just a lot of questions that I have. Um, I think the show has finally like picked up and reached a point where we're just gonna continue getting better and better and better from here. So I'm excited to keep going and see what happens. We're gonna keep the same attitude. We're just gonna appreciate the show for what it is. Um, 
I don't have really any hard feelings against the twins. I did wish they would have been a little nicer to Maroha, but we're just gonna move on from that and continue on with the series and see how this turns out. I'm very excited. So, if you guys like this video, feel free to like and subscribe. Check out some of our other stuff, The Mandalorian and Star Wars. If you have any shows you think I would like, feel free to drop them below in the comments and I'll check them out. So, I guess that's it. I'll see you guys later with episode 13 and hopefully the story just keeps getting better from here. See you guys later. Bye.